Hello, my name is Mr. Polk and welcome to my kitchen. Today we want to take a look at cauliflower. And cauliflower is one of those vegetables that um, a lot of people are doing a lot of trendy things with right now. Some people are taking the cauliflower because the inside, when you see me open it, it's a very tight structure. So some people are cutting it into slices and grilling it or sauteing it and calling it a cauliflower steak. Some people are cutting it up into teeny tiny little pieces and calling it rice cauliflower. What we're going to do today is break it down into the florets and then we're going to kind of put it in a batter and we're going to bake it in the oven and we're going to make uh, buffalo cauliflower. We're going to have cauliflower that's roasted in the oven with hot sauce and other seasoning and you'll be able to eat it like you would your buffalo wings or anything like that. You can even dip it in your ranch or your blue cheese and it's, it's just a great way to utilize a vegetable that is starting to be utilized in a lot of different ways. Okay, so now let's go ahead and break down our cauliflower. And the first thing I like to do is, if it has any of the excess leaves on the bottom, you can go ahead and break those off and get them out of your way. At least the, the larger ones, okay? You'll be able to cut them away, but at least they're out of your way for now. And then I like to take it, take my knife, and just cut it in half, okay? And here's where you can see what I was talking about, how people go through and make the steaks. Then I take the halves and I cut them in half, making quarters. So we go this way, we go this way. And now that you have your four quarters, you see that it has this large stem piece, almost like cabbage. And I just like to take it and kind of cut that away. And when you do, it's going to break up into the florets. Okay? And once you break it up into the florets, you can decide what piece size you want. You want to start with something like this, you know, it's maybe a, an inch and a half. You don't want to go much smaller. Um, like if so, if it's like chunks like this, you can just sort of keep the chunk. If you go too much smaller when they bake, they're going to bake down. Okay. You don't want them big old chunks, but they, you don't want them to bake down too much because they will shrink because of the vegetable and the water content. So you just sort of go through and cut it, break it apart. All right, we'll cut that one in half, and then this one. And, and you can break them, too, or cut them. And you're just going to process this until you have your entire cauliflower broken down. So when we roast our, our cauliflower the first time, we're going to put it in a batter. Uh, so we're going to start with some seasoning. we got about a half teaspoon of salt. Get out all that in there. We'll do some garlic powder, about two teaspoons. We'll do a teaspoon of paprika. That's going to give us spice, but it's also going to give us a, a really nice color with the, bar with the uh, buffalo sauce. And about a half teaspoon of pepper. And then to that is going to go three-quarter cups of milk. And we'll go ahead and give that a little whisk-whisk. And then what's going to make it a batter is we're going to put in three-quarter cups of all-purpose flour. Okay, and we just want to go ahead and whisk that together. So this is going to be like a batter. It's almost like a like a thin pancake batter. You want to whisk that around. And what this is going to do is it's going to season the cauliflower, and the flour is going to help with the browning, and it's going to give it a, a layer of texture as well. Okay, so that looks really nice. Once you have the seasoning mixed up and you have your batter, you're going to go ahead and put in your cauliflower. And then you're going to want to go ahead and toss that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put on a pair of gloves. You could toss it with a, a spatula or whatever you want. But I'm going to use my gloves because I'm going to go ahead and tray it up right away. Now you could put this right on a tray. Um, I like to put it on screens. I know. It, Makes a little bit of a mess of the screen, but uh, this allows the air to go through. Now, if you had an, an air fryer at home, you could use that as well. But what I do here is I put it up on the screen, and the convection in the air in the fan and the oven blows through it, um, and it really does make for a, a really nice product. So you can see here we're just tossing these little guys to coat. All right, so all of our, our little cauliflower friends here are getting a nice little bath in the, the breading mixture which has the seasoning in it. Um, it just has a really nice color to it right now. So once you have everything coated, then again, you could go right on a paper, right on a tray with parchment paper 
but I like to let the air go through it. So we're just going to lay these guys out. And if anything broke off and I have small pieces, I'm going to pick those out because I want them all roughly the same size as they bake. Okay, so that looks really good. And then go ahead and, you know, spread them out a little bit. You don't have to clump them all up because that's really going to let the air uh, circulate around them. And then these are going to go in the oven at 450. And they're going to bake for about 20 minutes. And then we're going to do the next step, which is really going to turn them into buffalo cauliflower. Okay, so these have been in the oven for about 10 minutes or so. Let's take a look. Ah, they're starting to brown up already. You can see the coating does a really nice job. So what we want to do after about 10 minutes of baking at 450, you want to go ahead and start flipping them over. Okay, and some of the coating might stick to the screen a little bit, but the advantage of this is that it's sticking only to the screen. If I was baking this on an actual uh, sheet tray or just on the paper, that whole side of the cauliflower uh, would be resting on the paper and the, the breading that that uh, batter that we put on uh, would be just kind of dripping and clumping onto the paper. So after you turn them all over, you're going to go ahead and put them back in for another 10 minutes. Okay, these look great. So let's get these guys back in the oven. They're saying, put me back. So we close them up. Okay, so you can see these have been in the oven for 20 minutes. They've come out. And what we're going to do now is, is coat them in the uh, hot sauce. So we're going to go with your hot sauce here, about a quarter cup or so of hot sauce. And then just like if you were doing your wings, uh, you're going to put in some melted butter and whisk that together. And then the other thing we're going to do, just to offset the heat just a little bit, is put in some honey. If you want to just have straight heat and you don't want the offset, that's fine. Now you can either brush them at this point, or what I'm going to do is go ahead and put them in, and I'm going to go ahead and give them a toss. Okay, because I think that way it's a little more authentic to wings, where you just toss them around. So, I'm going to take them off the, the tray here, like this. I'm just going to sort of put them in. And they're, they're about half, you know, they're half cooked. They've got another 20 minutes to go. But you can just see by how I'm handling them. They're, they're starting to soften up and get nice and tender. And then they're, once they're in here, you can either use your tongs or you can just put on a pair of gloves and have at it, however you want to do it. But this way, rather than just brushing them on, you're getting them a real nice even coat. And you can feel that they do have a little bit of a body to them because of the breading. And then once they're all on here and they're all coated in their hot sauce, I can really smell the hot sauce right here. I'm just going to put them back on my screen. And then they're going to go back in the oven for another 20 minutes until they get nice and, and, and brown. And they start to look kind of like a hot wing instead of cauliflower. They'll look almost like a boneless wing bite. All right, so they've been baking for an additional 20 minutes. Let's take a look. Woo, they're looking good. Let's check these out. So this is an additional 20 minutes at, four, at uh, 450. And you can see that they really start to brown up. They start to get a little Christmas to them. Um, they're really nice. And this is where if you do have one of these screens, like a, something that you would put your cookies on, it really does help because it allows the air to circulate. So now let's take a look at how we're going to plate these guys. Okay, so let's check them out. They just came out of the oven. And the idea is, is they sort of have the look of like a boneless wing, all right, like a boneless buffalo wing. So you can just take them and put them on a little plate. I have them on a, a rectangular plate. And then plate them, that's the, the fun part in this, is you plate them just like you would actually plate your buffalo wing. So you put a little pile of them on there. And then I also pair it with the classic celery sticks and the carrot sticks. And then a little bit of dressing, whether you like the traditional blue cheese or you like more of the ranch. Either way, uh, both of them work out. And you can see where this could be a, a really nice appetizer somewhere where, you know, oh, you got boneless wings. And then you're like, oh, no, it's cauliflower. And it's got all the flavors and everything. So there you go. That's a, a different way to use uh, a vegetable. So I'd like to thank you for cooking with me today. And I can't wait to cook with you real soon right here in Mr. Polk's Kitchen.